This is part 6 of .NET Return Test Questions and Answers video series. In this video, we'll discuss exporting data from SQL Server database tables to a notepad in these two formats, comma delimited format and pipe delimited format. In this demo, we'll be using these two database tables, departments and employees. So the first step here is to create these two tables itself, which I have already done. So here are those two tables and here is the SQL script to create and populate them with some test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. The next step is to design a web form that looks like this. So this web form is going to provide the end user the format in which they want the data to be exported. So if the end user selects comma delimited uh, option, then data from these two tables should be exported to a notepad with comma as the separator. So the data here is present in CSV format. Okay. If they select pipe delimited, then the separator should be the pipe symbol. Now look at the way the data is present. First, we have the first department row. So department ID, department name, and department location. So the separator here is comma. And followed by that, we have all the employees belonging to that department uh, one. So Mike, John, and Josh, all of them belong to department IT. And then we have the second department row, which is the HR department. And following that, we have all the employees belonging to HR department. So let's see how to achieve this. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. So what I have also done is created a new empty ASP.NET web application project, named it export data. And within the web.config file, I have already added the connection string. I've given this name dbcs. And at the moment, this is pointing to a server that is installed on my machine. And the database name is sample. And we are using um, integrated security, that is Windows authentication. And I have also designed the web form so that it looks like what we have on the slide. So first we have this text called format. So that's where we have the text and then the drop down list. So at the moment, this drop down list has got two options, comma delimited and pipe delimited. Notice for both of the list items, text and value um, properties are the same. Okay, and then we have the button here. And the ID of the button is btn export. And this is the event handler method that call, that gets called when we click this button. So within the code behind file, we also have that event handler method. So all that is left now is to write the ADO.NET code, retrieve data from the database tables, convert that either into a CSV format or pipe delimited format, and then store that in a notepad. Okay, now where we will be storing the exported data is within this folder. So within the C drive, I've created a folder called exported data. So within this folder, we will have the CSV formatted and pipe, you know, formatted data. All right, so now let's go ahead and write the required ADO.NET code first. So we are going to bring in the ADO.NET namespaces, that is system.data, system.data.sql client, and we also need system.configuration. So within the button click event handler, the first step is to read the connection string from web.config file. So we are going to make use of configuration manager class dot connection strings of, and we need to specify the name of the connection string. The name of the connection string is dbcs. So let's copy that and specify that here. And then we use the connection string property. Now, Let's create an instance of string builder object. In a bit, we will understand the purpose of the string builder object. Now, the string builder object is present in a different namespace, that is system.text. So let's bring in that namespace as well, system.text. String builder, let's call it sp equals new string builder. Now, let's go ahead and create a new SQL connection object. SQL connection, let's call it con equals new SQL connection. And we are going to pass the connection string as the argument for the constructor of the SQL connection class. All right, now, even before we do anything, what we need to first decide is what is the format that the end user has selected? Did he select you know, a comma delimited format or pipe delimited format? How are we going to know that? Um, that's based on the selection the user has made within the drop down list. So what I'm going to do here is actually create a variable of type string. Let's call it str delimiter. And 
if ddl export format dot selected value if the selected value is equal to comma delimited okay then the user want the data to be formatted using comma okay so if that is the selected value then we want the separator to be comma else we know that he might have selected the other option so then the separator is going to be a pipe symbol okay so we got the delimiter that's the choice the user has made now let's go ahead and create an instance of SQL data adapter object so DA equals new SQL data adapter now to the SQL data adapter we need to specify the SQL command that we want to execute now we want to retrieve data from these two tables so I have already returned the two SQL queries so select ID name and location from departments ID name and department ID from employees so when we execute these two queries that's what we get two tables of data so I'm going to separate these two queries with a semicolon okay and then copy them together and that's going to be our SQL command text and then we also need to specify the connection object that this data adapter is going to use okay so let's go ahead and create a data set object now let's call it DS equals new data set and let's fill the data set with data and now this data set is going to contain two tables and by default the tables you know will be named like tables of 0 tables of 1 you know using indexes it's not that good because uh, the readability of the code will not be that good so let's give meaningful names for the tables so ds dot tables of 0 the first table is going to be departments table so let's set the table name to something like departments and let's change the name of the second table to employees all right so at the moment the tables have meaningful names now what we need to do is read the first row from the departments table and then convert that to this format so we need department ID department name and department location so we are going to use a for each loop here for each data row let's call it DR let's actually give it a more meaningful name let's call it department DR in DS dot tables of which table is that departments table dot rows okay let's create a variable here of type integer let's call it department ID equals where are we going to retrieve the department ID from from the department data row and what is the name of the column the name of the column is ID so that's what we need to specify here and this is going to return that as an object but we want to convert that to an integer so let's convert that using convert that to in 32 so now we have the department ID okay so how should the format of the data be department ID the delimiter department name the delimiter and then the department location and here we have an instance of our string builder object so th this is what we are going to use to store um, you know the formatted data and finally whatever data we have within that string builder object um, we will take that data and then write that to a notepad so now the string builder object has got an append method so sp dot append so to whatever we already have within that append this department ID convert that to string and then immediately after that we need the delimiter okay it could be either comma or pipe depending on what the end user has selected from the drop-down list so once we have that we need the department name as well and to get the department name we are going to use this department DR so department DR of name dot to string and then we need the department location so let's copy that and the column name is going to be location so we are converting that to string and then after we have the department name we don't need the delimiter at the end either the comma or the pipe symbol need not be present after you know the department name which means we can remove this delimiter from there okay so after 
we have the department row then we want all the employees belonging to that department which means we are now going to take this department ID and then retrieve all the employees from employees table within the data set who belong to that department ID okay so now we are going to use another for each loop here so for each let's call this um, employee data row so employee dr n data set dot tables of employees dot rows now if we do this we are going to get every employee row from the database ta I mean from the employees table that's not what we want we want only the employees belonging to the current department ID so instead of using rows here we are going to use the select function and there is an overloaded version where we can specify a filter expression so now if you look at employees table so there's a department ID column based on which we can filter the rows so we are going to use that column in the filter so department ID department ID equals single quote and then a double quote and then we need to specify the department ID convert that to a string and then close the single quote and then we are closing that um, you know bracket of the select method and then another bracket okay so we have the employee DR here now what we need to do is retrieve the employee ID name and uh, their respective department ID so now we are going to copy this actually let's copy this line there so first we need the employee ID so employee DR of ID is the name of the column convert that to a string and then append the delimiter okay and then we want the employee name so sp dot append employee dr of name dot to string and then the delimiter and then finally we want the department ID of the employee and we already have department ID in this variable so we don't have to retrieve it from the data reader object instead we can simply use that variable so we can simply copy this and paste that right there so actually it's department ID so department ID dot two string and we don't need the delimiter there okay now there's one more important thing that we need to do now if you look at the data here there are two invisible characters that is after every row you know there is a carriage written that is an enter key there and what is the escape sequence character for enter key it's backslash R so at the end of every row there is a carriage written and at the beginning of every line there is a new line character so we need to print those as well so what I'm gonna do here is after we have printed out the location of the department we need to append backslash R that is for the enter key and backslash N for the new line character right and we need to do the same thing after every employee row okay so at this point within the string builder object we have the entire data either in CSV format or pipe delimited format now all that is left is to write the data that is present in the string builder object to a notepad so for that we are going to make use of classes that are present in system.io namespace so let's go ahead and bring in that namespace first and then we are going to make use of stream writer object so stream writer let's call it file equals new stream writer and we are going to use this overloaded constructor way we can specify the path of the file now we are going to store the notepads within this folder c colon exported data okay so let's copy that c colon exported data backslash let's name the file data.txt now at the moment here we are going to have an uh, compilation error that's because of the escape sequence so let's use verbatim literal or you can use double backslash whatever you prefer but using verbatim literal makes your code more readable okay so 
that's the file to which we want to write the data that is present in the string builder object so now we are going to use this stream writer object and then it has got a method called write line and then we are going to convert whatever data that is present within the string builder object to a string give it to the write line method and that's going to flush that out to this file and then all that is left is to close the stream writer okay so with all these in place let's go ahead and run this and now if you look at exported data folder we don't have anything in there so let's go ahead and run this now and see if it works as expected so we have selected comma delimited export data let's go to the folder open the file and notice that the data is in CSV format now let's actually select pipe delimited export data and now let's open this so the data is present in pipe uh, delimited format now CSV files will typically have dot CSV extension so if that's your requirement you know for the data to be present in a file that is named dot CSV then you can name it so so what I'm going to do here is if it's a CSV format that the end user has selected then we are going to call the file data.csv if it is a pipe delimited format then we'll call it data.txt so I'm going to create another variable here let's call it str file name equals that depends on what is the delimiter that the end user has selected and that's present in this variable str delimiter if that is equal to comma then we want the file name to be data.csv else we want the file name to be data.txt okay and then we will use this variable okay so we are going to put a double code there get rid of this hard coded name so that is going to be our file name now let's go to this exported data folder delete the file from there so we don't have anything at the moment so let's rerun this page and see if it works as expected so when we select comma delimited export now the file should be named data.csv now a CSV file can be either opened with a notepad or you can open that with Excel so I can right click on that open with notepad notice that the data is present in CSV format and you can also open it uh, using Microsoft Excel so here I have Microsoft Excel so Alt F O and then within exported data let's actually select all files so there we have data.csv so there you go now what is going to happen if we select pipe delimited format and then click export now notice that we have another file there data.txt we open that and the data is formatted using pipe delimiter that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day